Well, what's it in, friends, folks? We're fixing to go out to the Iron Church and get it. But first things first, let's get on to his lesson, which is July 17th. This is a really good one. This is called Measured Words. We're starting off with Ecclesiastes 5 and 2. Do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. Always at a battle against the flesh, except, or especially when we are mad. Because <laughs> anger, it gives a foothold to the devil. We have a quote from John Bunyan. When you pray, rather let your heart be without words, than your words be without heart. That's pretty awesome, because I'm always here to, to tell you that I'm here to lift hearts before iron. And um, sometimes the flesh makes me say some things that I have to ask for forgiveness for. And, uh, or it could be my tone of how I say things. Sometimes I have a business sense of a business tone where I don't mean to say it like that, especially with my babies. And I'll catch myself, or they'll catch me and be like, Daddy, you know, be like, I'll forgive you, babies. Not say I'm sorry, but say forgive me. There's a big difference between forgiveness and sorry. Saying I'm sorry, that's as good as the U.S. government and giving us into the peace treaty, which they're still breaking today. <laughs> That's another subject for another time, but it really gets me that now they can come on into land and start arresting Indians instead of calling the BIA or the Light Horse Police or whoever. It just ain't right in my book. They're going to get you anyways, but still, there's procedures, and now they just do what they want. Let's get into this. In word, if you had an appointment to confer with the president in the Oval Office, would you prepare? Would you plan that you're going to say what you're going to say before him or would you just play it by ear all but the most reckless and careless of us would consider our words wisely we would realize we're meeting we're meeting with someone who has a power to change things we 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 think about what we want to change but we rarely approach god that way perhaps our aware it's our awareness that our time with him is unlimited perhaps we've heard so many pastors and teachers tell us that Tell us that even our smallest concerns are his concerns. Perhaps we're inter interpreted, inter interpreted his generous time of detailed care as reasons that prayer can be casual. If so, we misunderstood. God does give us unlimited time, and he does care about the details. For prayer, it is anything but casual. Otherwise, everybody will be doing it all the time. It would be as smooth as talking. Jesus rebuked both religious hypocrites and pagans for their many words. Maybe he was honing in on their annoying repetitions. But he also pointed out their false idea that many words get God's ear. You ever heard someone minister that goes on and on and on and on and on when a man or a woman of great understanding uses few words? He also warned that we will be accountable for every careless word we've spoken. And we can assume that his standards for prayer are probably not lower than his standards for conversation. Wow. God encourages us to come to his throne with boldness and confidence. But he does not encourage us to come to his throne with carelessness. Our words and prayer carry incredible weight. They should be well considered. Perhaps a good approach to prayer would be to take Solomon's advice. After all. God surely has more important information to share with us than we have to share with him. Yes, he wants to hear our desires. He also wants us to listen to his. Both are extremely important. That makes me think that the potter, the clay does not talk back to the potter. He's the potter with the clay on his will, and he's forming us up. And, you know, he, he we're his masterpiece creation. We have dominion over all things, but we need to have dominion over it. This tongue, this tongue, it, it, what does it say? It speaks blessings and then it can speak pollution like a muddy fountain. And I have to watch it with that because some people make me mad, especially those that get up and go on and on and on. And I'm like, I can't learn nothing with them. Lord, are you testing my patience? <laughs> but the great ministers, I can tell you what they said. I can tell you, you know. The gist of what the Lord put in them to root into my heart, so that I learn from I learn not necessarily from them, but through the Lord using them as His vessel. You see what I'm saying? And that's why I'm here. I'm here to make His knowledge appealing, just like in Proverbs, and and I'm learning to do it in a good and loving tone, so that you want to learn. 
what not necessarily what I know, but what the Lord's blessings are for you. There is no luck in God's design. So do it with measured words. Be blessed in your iron journey.